Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, Welcome to service. Tell them, Welcome to another transformation. Tell them something is going to happen in your life tonight. If you believe that, say an amen. amen. Nobody comes to church, Mount Zion, and remains the same, unless you want to remain the same. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about what we started in our Let's Know God series on Tuesday night by Zoom, where we talked about living like gods on earth. Living like gods on earth. Now, Psalm chapter 82, verse 1. Psalm chapter 82, verse 1. The Bible says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Verse 2. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Seller. Verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Verse 4. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. Verse 5. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Verse 6. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Okay, give me this same scripture in King James Version. Back, back to verse one. Okay, it says God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among He judges among the gods. Verse two. How long will you judge unjustly? So, the certain is a court, and you know one of the attributes of God is that God is a judge. So the certain here is a court, and God is judging among judges. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the presence of the wicked? Selah. Verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Stop. So, one of the mistakes people um, used to make sometimes is to think that this particular scripture is referring to God judging among angelic beings. No. Because the defense of the poor and the fatherless, the doing of justice, is an attribute of human beings. It is people in leadership that do justice. It is people in leadership that come to the defense of those who are poor and fatherless. So what God is actually saying is that he's speaking to born-again Christian believers who he has already delegated control over planet Earth. That they are slacking. They are slacking. And the slacking is on multiple counts. He's telling them, look, I gave you the authority to defend the fatherless, to defend the needy, to bring justice on planet Earth. But you are dying like normal human beings. Verse 4. He says, deliver the poor and needy. So this is not necessarily an angelic construct. It's a human construct. He said, deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. Then verse 5. Now, pause. So what gets my attention in this scripture is that from verse 1 to verse 4, he's giving us, his sons and daughters, what is supposed to be our operating document. Your job is to bring justice on earth. Your job is to make earth to be like heaven. Your job is to break the bands of the wicked. I think there's an echo here. Can you remove that echo? You just touched something, please. Untouch what you touched. <laughs> that thing that you did, undo. You know, there's an undo in the computer. <laughs> Control Z, undo. I think it's better. But it's still there. The echo is still there. But do what, do what you can. So, from verse 1 to 4, he's telling us how God sees us. I'm going somewhere. What, what, what am I talking about? Living 
being like God on earth. Somebody say, I am destined to live like a God on planet earth. It didn't enter. Somebody say, I'm made to live like a God on earth. That's how you are made. So God looks at his sons and daughters and he's addressing them. Why are you guys not taking charge? Why are you guys not getting things in order? And he says the reason is verse 5. They know not. Neither would they understand. They walk on in darkness. And because of that, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Then he reiterates who they are. He says that you guys don't know. You guys don't understand that you are gods. Then he repeats it again. Verse 6. Watch. Verse 6. He says, I have said, ye are gods. How many of you are children of God? Some people are not here with you. If anybody is sleeping around you, wake that person up. <laughs> Every demon of slumber is bound today in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you here are children of God? If you are a child of God, shout, I'm a child of God. My question is this. What does a human being give birth to? Is it not a human being? What does a rat give birth to? Is it not a rat? Has anybody seen a cow give birth to a goat? It's only in maybe home movies or those kind of things that that happen. But you will never see anything produced outside its kind. So if you're a child of God, what do you think you are? Don't be shy about it. You're a God, period. <laughs> it is not boasting. It is who you are. If the Bible says so, it is what? So. Somebody say, I am a God. They are saying it without conviction. Say, I am a God. I am a God. Why am I a God? Why am I a God? Simple and short. <laughs> if you are a child of God, God cannot give birth to animals. He gives birth to what? Gods. He only creates animals. But he gives birth to what? Gods. So he reiterates this here and says, I have said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. That's who we are. But he now laments in verse 7 and says, But you shall die like men. Pastor Ma, there was a distinction between children of God as gods and men. There was a distinction between us who are born again Christians as gods and men. To the tune that one day, Moses was wondering, how am I going to meet Pharaoh? How am I going to start this discussion to let my people go? And you know what God said, if you can find that scripture, you know what God said? God said, see, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. What got my attention is the sea. Pastor God, Johnson, what got my attention is the word sea. Do you know why? This is not what God was planning to do. He had already done it. It's just that Moses did not see it. So he said that the beginning of this journey is an understanding of who you are. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have what? So when I say you're a God, you need to understand that God didn't just start with that scripture to make you a God. That's who you are. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. From today, all this, I, we are not in this church. We are not. We are not. We are not taking excuses. It's either we win or we win. Highest, it will take a process, but we must come out victorious. Are we here? Highest, last, last, it will take a process, but we must come out what victorious? Why? Because we are children of God. And as a child of God, you are also a God. Somebody say, on this planet earth, I am a God. It is not boasting. It is who God made me. I am a God. Because I am the child of God. If you believe that, shall amen. Amen. There's some, okay. I think I've told this story before. 
when I first got the land where I built my house back in my home country, the whole place was bush. You know, you know this bush that is forest. It was actually a forest area. And the community did not want to sell that area until the government wanted to seize it. So that's where kidnappers and all sorts of things will carry people and go and hide. So it's a place you don't enter. So they called it a forest. So people bought land, but they were afraid to build because nobody was there. I bought land and built. So when I moved into that place, I moved into the forest. From the beginning of the streets to the end, in fact, it was actually my own street that had one other house that wasn't completed. Two plus before mine. Every other place, bush. Every other place. Then if you want to now see where people are living, you go beyond that forest area and then go down, down, down and then you see the village. What they call the village. So when I entered there, I was hearing stories. You know, all these stories about kidnapping, witches, this one, that one. I came out in the night by 2 a.m. in the middle of my compound and I announced myself. I am... You know what I mean by announce myself? You come to the spiritual atmosphere and tell them who you are. So when I'm telling you guys to repeat, I am a God, it's not because of church. There are times you will enter your office, things are happening somehow. Come early in the morning. Just come early in the morning. When people are not really there, just stand there and say, I am the principality in this environment. Nothing is allowed to fly or move or act until I say so. That's what I did. I just came in the middle of the compound in the night. Cricket is making cri cri. Squirrels are flying up and it was there I saw squirrels. I saw a lot of squirrels. I never, I, you know, you see things on TV. In that my <laughs> squirrel up and down. <laughs> They'll be flying the fence, making noise. But man, when you know who you are, you're not afraid. I just came out in the middle of the compound and said, Hear me, the forces in this entire atmosphere. I am here and I am the principality here. No witch flies, no wizard flies. No kidnapping can happen here again. Nothing can go wrong in this environment in the name of Jesus Christ. After I did it, all the noise about kidnapping there strangely shifted from that place and then went to some streets coming into the area. Let, how do I explain it? It's just like when you have an estate. Then you have a road, a main road that comes in before you now get to the road that enters the estate. The kidnapping that was rampant that made people not to build inside that estate area it just shifted and went to the area of the road so the area of the road is the place that is developed where nothing normally happens so it should be the bush that something should be happening not the developed areas then next thing i start hearing kidnapping happened in those areas i say okay what did i do i have shifted the force away from my environment i said fine since you now decide to happen around me and I heard it, I can still shift the thing away from that environment. I came out again, not even in the night, I think it was in the daytime. I said, okay, I draw a circumference with the blood of Jesus Christ around X, Y, Z, A, B, C territories, round about that area that the new kidnapping started and beyond. I said, I am the principal. I am Akali Pareahata. Hey, do you know what it is to be a God? A God, you will say it and it's done. The thing is that when we say these things, it looks to you like it's church service. When will your Bible stop being church service or stop being a book that is a religious book and start being a manual for life? This thing can make you rich. This thing can rattle the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> Are you still here? Yes, sir. Um, verse 26. So sometimes when we want to know the purpose of all creation and your purpose, you start going back to the beginning. Why did God even create human beings in the first place? And he said, simple. 
And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle. And over what? And over what? Who are they referring to here? A God. Somebody who is in charge. You were originally created to be in charge. What messed up the program was Satan. What restored the program back to normal and upgraded it is Jesus Christ. When we understand this thing, what we start thinking about when we have challenges is which of the keys do we put in place to get the desired result. You're no longer arguing about whether you are capable. You're no longer arguing about whether you have rights. It's just like now, sir. You may be in your house and for instance, maybe you wake up in the morning. Let's say miracle. You wake up in the morning and you see a snake. The first thing you do is get it killed. Then the second thing you do is, how can this thing have entered my house? You're not asking, oh God, I'm so afraid. I don't know why, what brought me to UAE. Now, I thought the song was a bit hot, but now snakes are everywhere. You don't do that. And why is it that you don't do that? Because you know that you have power over that thing. You know that you have a domain that you have secured to an extent. So if something entered, that thing was a leakage. You don't complain about it. You seal it. So you move around your house. You check, do I fumigate? Was there a hole somewhere? Was there a window I left open? That's what you're thinking. That's how in the same vein, something is not going on in your life that is supposed to be. Something is not in place in your life that is supposed to be. You don't complain. You just remember that you are a God. And begin the process of creating that which you desire. You know. <laughs> I don't like sounding like a preacher. Because when you sound like a preacher. There is something that happens in the air in church. It just sits some people. And people take it. We are in church. So we are all goody goody. And everything that we hear is Amen. <laughs> And then they go out the moment they step out their problem. Just one little ha. Ah, and then, my mambo, my father, my mother, my grandfather, where are you? Help me. This UAE, I don't know how I can. You forget you're a Christian. And the Bible said, He that is in you is what? Hi. Divine. Remember what happened? <laughs> Remember the message you sent me last week? Two things came to my head. Number one, I said, why didn't you? That was what I told myself. Why didn't you deal with it? That was the first thing that came to me. How can something happen? And then you succumb to the circumstance. But then in my mind, I remembered, okay, there may be different things going on. What did I do? Text message. Bring a mic. Come on, tell them what happened. Somebody say, I am a God. And look, all these things that I'm saying, it has nothing to do with Pastor Chinedu. It has everything to do with what Jesus has already made you. You can do more. So, a few hours before church service, I just had some excruciating pain within my, uh, inside my left ear. I couldn't actually breathe properly. It was so severe that I, I, did, I wasn't able to even think well. So immediately I sent a message to pastor explaining the situation. Uh, I believe he was already in church at the moment. So after service, he saw my message, he replied, and immediately he decreed that I, I have my healing in the name of Jesus. And in less than two seconds, I couldn't feel anything. All the pain that was disturbing me I don't want disappeared to miraculously. I don't, want to clap. I don't want you to clap for a reason. Let's continue. It disappeared miraculously. I just couldn't feel any pain anymore. I was, I was restless. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. I was just confused. So immediately, he sent the words and I read and I remembered the teaching in the previous service. I just said, Amen. And I believed it. And I received my healing instantly let me say something why i told you guys not to clap is that it's a general church thing hey pastor is anointing i don't care about that. that's not my point if you guys are not strong then i'm wasting my time that's the, that's the truth of the matter why am i preaching point i wanted to get to you is that 
Do you know if you had done the same thing, just put your hand on your ear and speak to it, it will still go. It will still, I'm telling you, it will go. Why you struggle is that you've not been trying. But the Jesus that died for you, divine, is not a different Jesus that died for me. There's no Jesus, Jesus, Jesus that died for me then. That died for you. Same Jesus Christ. And then the same Holy Spirit, the same blood of Jesus oh, that was shed for me. Same one that was shed for you and every other person. One was not diluted with water. Same blood. Then the same name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know the Bible said at the mention of the name. They didn't say whether it's an elder or a small kid that mentioned. They just said whoever mentioned it. All you need to do is say it in faith. Knowing that that name is what has the power to deliver the results. Hi. <laughs> Don't mind. We are going to do small teaching. Me and you today. <laughs> come, come this way. <laughs> My job is to get everyone. Okay. Show, show Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 16. Let me tell you what our job is. The truth of the matter is that God wants every one of his children to be like Jesus Christ. Both in ability, both in wisdom, in anointing, in power, in functionality. If Jesus could walk on water, he wants us to walk on water. He says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working of every part. Is it verse 16? Go to verse 17. Let me see whether it's verse 17 or verse 15. No, 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 no. Go back to verse 15. Verse 15. 15. 15 14 I'm trying to see where uh, uh, yeah 13 is 13 is 13 I'm trying to show you our job the job of pastors the job of pastors is not for you people to clap for us when we heal people or we raise people from the dead or we display anointing no that display is for you guys to know that you can do it as well what our job is it says till we all come into the unity of faith and the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of okay i picked it out of context go to 11 where it says and when jesus christ ascended he gave gifts to men okay now see good thank you now this is talking about jesus death and resurrection when he ascended he said and he verse 12 verse 10 from verse 10 Verse 10, sorry. Okay. He that descended, talking about Jesus, is the same also that ascended up far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles. 9 is where he talks about gifts. He gave gifts to men. You have to go to 9. I'm just giving context. And this is digression, actually. <laughs> it's actually digression. Okay. Lord, help me. <laughs> Verse 8. <laughs> it's well, oh. It's well, oh. Holy Spirit, help me. This is not it. Okay. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave what? Gifts unto men. Those gifts are human beings. The fivefold ministry. That's what it's called. The fivefold ministry. The pastors, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, and the prophets. Fivefold ministry. Like five fingers in a hand. These are the gifts that Jesus Christ gave to his body. And those gifts are supposed to equip the body to do the work of the ministry. We can't reach this world, pastors alone. It is everyone here that does the reaching. What the pastors and the prophets and the apostles do is equipping the people to be able to go and reach the world. There is a limit to what a pastor can do. But there is no limit to where you can enter. So as I'm speaking to each of you, some people are going to schools, some people are going to construction work, some people are going to the medical sector, some people are going to the political sector, some people are going to the business sector. I cannot be there. I can't be there all at the same time. But each of you can be there doing exploits for God. Are we together? My job is to equip. Oh, Lord. So whenever you hear, and that's why I say don't clap. Whenever there is, you, I lay hands on the sick. You, know, you notice what I said I, start, I will start doing. Anytime I get anybody healed, I will start teaching. Teaching how it is done. Reason I'm teaching how it is done because you guys must do it. If not, <sighs> the 
this is actually a discussion I have with God and an agreement. Where the end time has reached now, sir, no superstar pastors. It is the whole body of Christ moving into the world to show signs and wonders, not to talk, empty talk. He must have signs and wonders, if not, people won't be convinced. How can you convince an unbeliever that Jesus is real if you're just talking? He will tell you his philosophy. But when you show him power, when he gets healed and he sees results, nobody argues with result. So as much as I can, as I'm preaching, I will be teaching so that you will know what to do. Are we together? I can come out of this place. Can I come out of this place? Must I read it? Okay. Wherefore he said, <laughs> when he ascended up, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 9. Oh, I need to come out of here. Now, he that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles, I mentioned it, and prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Fivefold. Verse 12. For the perfecting, you see the job? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. So to get the saints to be like Christ so that they can go into the world and win souls for Jesus Christ. Whenever you come to church just to come and receive, you don't understand what Jesus died for. You should never come to church alone. It's an error. And when you finish church service and you go back and you're satisfied and you don't tell anybody about Jesus Christ, you don't have a clue the Jesus Christ that died for you. He didn't die for you alone. Christianity is not a private thing. It is for you to share with other people the goodness of what God has done in your life and through Christ. So that they themselves also can be what? Blessed. And there is a mystery about spiritual things. The more you give, the more your own increases. That's the mystery. The more you share about Jesus Christ, the more his grace rests on you. That's a mystery. It even works in finances. The more you give, the more you receive. Spiritual things work in the opposite of the natural. So, let me teach you now. Let's do teaching. Come. Maybe that's what we'll do. But before I do teaching, I want to read one scripture. Then I do teaching. Are you ready? Yes, Psalm 115 verse 16. In TPT translation. In TPT translation. Somebody say, I am a God. I have a right to command and be obeyed. Say it. Psalm 115 in TPT. Look at what it says. The heavens belong to our God. They are his alone. But he has given us the earth and put us in what? Charge. <laughs> Pastor Ima, if you watch Dominion Convention in UK, he was talking about this thing that where the majority of the church in africa has missed it is that they go and pray 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 when they finish praying they sit on their seat and expect god to come from heaven to do it but when you understand that you are in charge your prayer is to get divine instruction and divine grace to get the spiritual moving but you still get up and do the one that you have to do that's why the bible says with god all things are possible if you want to have a child, you can pray from now till tomorrow. If there is no man, let's say you're a woman, and you want to have a child today, and no man meets you, the Virgin Mary story happened only once, so it's not going to happen again. <laughs> it will not happen again. So you can pray from now till tomorrow. Until you and your husband meet, there's not going to be conception. So after praying and calling for the child, you have to do something physical. Now, See what I did in your case. And I'll teach this and I'll close. I can't even go too far here. The Bible said something that he sent his word and healed there. Have you seen that scripture before? He sent his word and it healed their diseases. The Bible also said, they shall what? Lay hands on the sick and they will what? Recover. Two streams are being talked about here. 
I lay hands on somebody who is sick, that person recovers. But what if the person is not near me, like he wasn't? I thank you, my dear. You send the word. My dear, do you know the funny thing? That word sent, it doesn't have to be your voice. It can be a message. As far as it is still word that is sent, once the man reads it and receives it, same action will happen. You can do deliverance with text message. You can be in a meeting, maybe you're in a business meeting, and your mom or somebody calls you and tells you that there's a problem. You can't come out of that business meeting. How do you deal with it? Send a message. Put in Jesus' name in capitals with exclamation mark. Send that thing. What did you do? You still sent the word. Once he hits that person and that person receives it, it will deliver the same result. Because we will not always be where the problem is. We will not always be there. But God is everywhere. His spirit and his power is everywhere. But I noticed something about God. He does not anoint nothing. He must have something to anoint. So when prophet Elijah met the woman that was saying that, ah, my husband is dead and these people are coming to collect my children. We don't have money to pay. He didn't just make a whole lot of noise. He said, what do you have? He said, that's a little oil. He said, bring it. The anointing rests on something. When Jesus Christ had 5,000 plus people to feed and they, was, they were in a desert place, they, couldn't, they didn't even have the money to buy the food. He said, what do you guys have? And then somebody says, somebody here has five loaves of two. That is enough, raw material. Because sometimes to create or amplify material things, you need a substance first to start with. Father, hmm. Shalabali Barakadaya, Leprakabari Kadaya. So, that being said, do you know? Do you know, sir, that if I did not send that message, that sickness will still be there? Not because I'm special. But because God needs something to anoint. No word had gone out. No hand was laid. Because when I lay hands, what I'm doing is that the power of the Holy Spirit inside of me is activated. As I lay hands now, for instance, when I say in the name of Jesus, it's like a switch is turned on. Bam, electric current moves and the healing happens. But I'm not dead. So how is it going to happen? The word so God anoints your actions, God anoints your words. God also anoints other things. If somebody is somewhere and you want that person healed, you can pray on a handkerchief, give it to the person to go there, the anointing still rests on it, it just rests on something. Meanwhile, you know that God is everywhere. However, he normally needs certain stuff. You know what those things are called? Point of contact. And that thing will carry the anointing and the power of God. Move in the direction of that person. And when it gets to that person, do you know what they are waiting for? Acceptance. Just like you did. Amen. And Mary did it. Be it unto me. The moment you say be it unto me, that thing will hit. Thank you, sir. I just tried to do small teaching. <laughs> Somebody say we are gods. Let me start rounding up. Did you understand what I said? And I will also say something. Please, if you hear these things and do nothing about it. If you hear these teachings and do nothing about it. There's something that happens. Take note of it. Some of you mature pastors will know. One day, and I'm not prophesying, I'm just telling you how it works. One day, they will require you to use what you've been hearing. And that requirement to use what you've been hearing comes with a problem. Many times you've been trained, you're equipped, you know what to do, you know how to lay hands on the sick and they recover. You don't do it. 
You know how to talk to people about Jesus Christ and get them saved and born again and get them healed and delivered. You don't do it. God brings that problem into your house. It will put it on you. Not that he's the one that brings it, but he allows it. It will come on you or it will come on somebody close so that you wake up. But let it not be that when it now happens, you shake yourself, nothing in the coconut. That's why you will notice, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to tell you guys to get active. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's why you will notice something, sir. Do you notice, when you started being born again, the very first time you gave your life to Christ, any little prayer you pray, oh Lord, oh Lord, you get answer. Oh Lord, I need this fear. Angels are walking. What are they trying to do? Encourage you because you're just a baby starting. When you remain baby, you refuse to grow. Refuse to take responsibility. And begin to also get other people into the kingdom of God. It gets to a time. You pray. The prayer is not... You use the name of Jesus Christ though. You bound, you photocopied, you laminated, you scanned, you sent email, you sent fax. Nothing is happening. And then you'll be wondering, where is God? Then the next thing you see somebody that two of you joined the kingdom of God at the same time. But the person got into serious activity. Entered a department in church. Got into evangelism. Probably got into ministry and all that kind of stuff. Same you and him enter church at the same time. You'll be seeing the guy exploits. Things are happening in his life. But you, nothing is going on. One day you'll talk to him. And say, bros, me and you entered this thing together. How come it is that you're getting results I'm not getting? And then you tell the person your problem. And when you finish telling the person your problem, the same person you enter church with lays hand on you and you get answer. Have you seen? Anyway, you guys may not have seen it. <laughs> lays hand on you and you get answer. You'll be telling yourself, how come? Where did you get this power? The truth of the matter is that the same power of the Holy Spirit has been there. It's just that you're not using it. Anything you learn in God... You will write exam. I'm warning you guys. Oh. <laughs> you will write. Oh. <laughs> so pastor said something. He said whenever you enter a challenge or a trial, go back to your notes. The exams are not new. Number two, God equips you before the time. He brings trainings for you before the time. He brings teachings on faith, teachings on healing. He brings all those things before the time. The problem is that you think the problem will come in the next two days. No, it may take six months. But when it comes, you better have studied your notes, practiced, and gotten that thing to be not just mental exercise, but revelation. It enters you. <laughs> Are we still here? <laughs> you know, my... Um, my wife does a witty mother's clinic. So, sometimes I hear reports that some people attend and some people don't attend. And I start laughing in my heart. Why am I laughing? You may think you don't want to get pregnant, so why are you bothered? There's an exam coming. And the problem is that when the exam comes, it will be you and that doctor in that hospital alone. So you better have learned something to push that baby out supernaturally. Otherwise, how many of you have been in a hospital when your wife is, you know, I've been half four, so I know. You will hear some noises though. While you're there, just in with your wife, you know, they're waiting for the baby to come out. You will hear screams from one room. Then somebody will run out, pulling her hair. <laughs> This thing we enjoy in Christianity, you go give birth to a child and you're okay. Some people go give birth to a uh. There's a particular lady that came and asked for prayers. She gave birth to a child. I don't know what it is. No, you may understand. But after giving birth to the child, when she, um, something about where she poos or something, I don't know how, I, I'm trying to understand how she explained it. When she uh, wants to urinate, it comes out through the area where she defecates from. So something just spots. So she's wearing a pampas, like a napkin. And she said that the doctor told her it cannot be worked on until she gets pregnant again and she's about to deliver. Then they will now do a CS 
open up the stomach, find out where the problem is and start correcting. Everybody in this church, you need to understand divine healing. No? Where is that girl? Then? Okay, she didn't come. I was telling you about a lady here in the UAE. Woke up one day. Maybe when she comes, she'll give the testimonies as herself. Rashes that she cannot understand. Her eyes, her ob her face, itching her. So she sent me a message. That was about two weeks ago or thereabouts. She sent a message and said that this is what's going on. That she's feeling weak. Her whole body is itching. She's scratching her eye. That she cannot stop scratching her body. I asked her, have you gone for tests? She says, you know how UAE is. If you don't have your Emirate, you, no hospital will listen to you. So all of you know the kind of environment we are in. You better know how to get healed in God. You better know it. And we just prayed and Jesus Christ took care of that thing. And I was telling myself in my mind, what if there is no divine healing? This is something she has been buying drugs and taking. Why am I even sharing this thing? I'm trying to get you guys to know that nobody comes here to entertain you. You better hear well and apply because there will be exam. Don't say I didn't say. Well. I said. <laughs> there will be what? Exam. I think I'll, let, let, me, let me just start winding down. I have already taken off in a direction. Father, I thank you. But no matter how, no matter what, remember that you are a God. God created you like that. He created you and put you in charge of planet Earth. So that you can bring to bear on Earth what is in heaven. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 says that we are all, we, uh, that Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. 1 John chapter 4 verse 17 says, as he is, so are we. So in God's mind, he, when he said, let us make man in our image, his whole plan was that we should be like him. Never complain. What you don't understand, go to the Bible or ask any of the pastors or go online. Get knowledge in that area. Buy books. Get knowledge in that area. When you get knowledge in that area, you get strong. The world has been working since. It will still work today. It will still work tomorrow. The question is, is it going to work in your life? Or will you be hearing testimonies of other people? I have come to an understanding that once we are with God, we have sure victory. Highest is a process of time. Highest. But you can never fail once you stay consistent. Let's rise on our feet and pray. I think I have to close here. Next week is communion service. I'll continue from there. Hallelujah. What I'm going to ask us to do, because I also understand that one of the major reasons why people are not experiencing the power of God in their lives, some of it is doubt, some of it is sin. Majorly is those two areas, doubt, you don't, you don't believe, and then sin. So let's take one minute. Some of you, you may think you're okay, but there may be, you know, when we say sin, don't think of the very big ones like fornication, adultery, or murder. Sins of the heart. You just don't like somebody. And it happens very often. Somebody's beefing you. Yeah, so you and somebody have a quarrel. So heart issues. And those heart issues are the ones that send Christians to hell faster. You come out of the house, you and your husband quarrel. So even though you guys are coming to church, one person is in East Coast, the other person is in West Coast. The children are now in South Coast. When you guys get to the house, um, honey, you know, there's a honey that is not honey. <laughs> honey. Then the man will answer, as if he's an animal. The wife will say, what will you eat today? The man will say anything. How do you want the food? The man will say anyhow. When do you want the food? Anytime. All that quarrel. Don't die in it, though. <laughs> if you die in it, the demons you've been binding will be waiting for you in hell. Heart issues are also sin. The Bible said anytime you have bitterness or you hate somebody, your brother, it's like you're committing murder. Then he says, anytime you call somebody thou fool, you're in 
you're at risk of being judged in hellfire. So take one minute and just clean out your heart and say, Father, whatever bitterness, whatever pain, whatever anger, whatever sin I'm committing, I'm asking for mercy. And if you're not born again, come here to me while every other person is praying. Let's get that sorted out. If you've not given your life to Christ and you know, you can come forward and let's pray with you. But for every other person, just talk to God and ask God to clean out your heart. Clean out your heart. You unload, unload, unload. The baggage is too much. You can't fight sin alone. Ask Jesus to help you. That's why he's your helper. Ask him to help you. Some people gossiping. Some people backbiting. Some people malice. You can't say anything good about anybody. Repent. Repent of it. So that God can flow through your life. Some people even hate themselves. It's not other people, themselves. They hate themselves. You cannot hate yourself. You're created in the image of God. Ask God for mercy. Father, I come with the blood of Jesus for everyone, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus on each and every one of us. I ask for your mercy. Help. Cleanse us, O oh Father. Cleanse us. Cleanse us. Cleanse us. Cleanse us of every unrighteousness, every sin every sin of action every sin of words every sin of thoughts cleanse us Lord. cleanse us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ forgive us and Father we make up our minds to turn away from it we are not just asking you to forgive us now to return back to the sin tomorrow we are turning 180 degrees away from it and we trust in your grace to keep us to help us to stand strong for you. Just talk to God in your own words. Many of you, your blessings and your breakthroughs that you're looking for is tied to this repentance. God is eager to help you, but you're not allowing him because your iniquities have created a barrier between you and God. Sort it out today so that in this new quarter that we are entering from tomorrow, you will start to experience divine speed and grace. Remove every bitterness. Remove every sin of masturbation, pornography, immorality, and all that. Remove it. It's not helping your life. If you've been into it, you can check your life. Nothing has been moving. Tell God, I give you everything. I make you Lord of my life in every way. Hand over your life completely. Your finances, your thoughts, your destiny. God is more than able and capable of sorting you out, of taking you from where you are and elevating you to a great and mighty place. He's more than able and capable. We're in a time where nobody should pray, play with their Christianity. We're in a time where those that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploits. Thank you. 